here are 15 games that I'm looking forward to and yeah, you guessed it, 2015. Man, 2014 was a crazy year. There were a lot of shutdowns, the maker of Bioshock closed its doors, and 50 different EA multiplayer games got the ax, but there was some big news as well. Twitch and Oculus were both acquired by Amazon and Facebook, respectively. On a sadder note, Ralph Baer, the grandfather of video games, who I mentioned in my Military History of Games episode, he passed away a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and of course, there's the gate that shall not be named. So on that note, I'm very excited to look forward to 2015. If I'm being really honest, I think it could be one of the best years for the medium in a very long time. It reminds me a lot of 2008 when indie games crested with titles like Braid and Castle Crashers alongside big releases, some of which are my favorites like GTA 4, Dead Space, Fable 3, and Mirror's Edge. Man, that was a good year for games. One substantial shift is that the small teams that would have made indie titles then are making the blockbusters now. So without further ado, let's take a look at 15 games that I'm excited about in 2015. And before we get started, let me just say, this is my list of games that I'm excited about. You likely have your own list with games that aren't going to be featured on my list, and that's totally okay. There's no one right list for anyone, except for the list I'm going to share with you right now. No, I'm just kidding. Please let me know what games you're excited about in 2015 in the comments. Cuphead by Studio MDHR. Two Canadian brothers have taken on the gargantuan task of cell shading by hand thousands of frames to create the universe that is Cuphead. It's an ode to pre haze code animation, you know, when cows had udders and animals didn't have to wear pants. I'm excited about Cuphead because I've never seen a game that looks like this. Seriously, and I look at a lot of games. Below, by KP Bear Games. Toronto's KP Bear Games have been making titles for other people for quite some time, and the studio is generally known for its sense of humor. It was on full display with last year's Super Time Force. And besides, why else name your game company after the planet's largest rodent? Below is a welcome you take from them. It's about a tiny warrior exploring the depths of a remote island. However, the moody and grainy tone suggests that Below is for people who grew up exploring the world of Hyrule, but are looking to walk a little bit on the dark side. Sunset by Tale of Tales. Belgian duo Mikael Samin and Aurea Harvey are known for their sense of experimentation, with titles like their retelling of Little Red Riding Hood in the Path and The Graveyard, a reflection on mortality and death. Sunset is a big shift for Tale of Tales. It takes place in a single apartment in a fictional South American city in the early 1970s. You play a housekeeper named Angela Burns. Gripping, I know. Seriously though, I'm excited about the game because it's an opportunity to tell a really big story about Latin American revolution, but from the space of one single room. Firewatch by Campo Santo. Campo Santo is the traveling Wilburys of video games. It's a supergroup comprised of people who worked on highly regarded games like The Walking Dead, Mark of the Ninja, Bioshock 2, and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Firewatch is a mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness where your only emotional lifeline is the person on the other end of a handheld radio. The wind's really picking up. Yeah, it is. I'm psyched for Campo Santo's first effort because of that color palette, man. I mean, look at it. It's like magic hour all the time. Anyway, the game is inspired by the look of posters developed by the Works Progress Administration, one of the biggest programs of FDR's New Deal. So now you know. That Dragon, Cancer, by The Greens. Ryan and Amy Green started making a game about their son Joel, who was diagnosed with terminal cancer at the age of 12 months. Sadly, Joel died last year. Yet the Greens are powering on by creating an adventure game about hope in the face of death. That Dragon Cancer is going to be a big test of maturity for games as a medium, as well as for players that are going to have to experience losing a child. We're used to this type of material in other mediums. I hope games can prove that they're up to the challenge. Kentucky Route Zero Episodes 4 and 5 by Cardboard Computer. Kentucky Route Zero is a magical, realist adventure set in the backwoods of Kentucky. It's also one of the strangest and most enchanting games I've ever played. Even better, it's being released piecemeal and may prove to be a landmark in episodic storytelling. The Witness by Tekla. Jonathan Blow actually hired a landscape designer to work on some of The Witness. He's very exact. There isn't a ton known about the game aside from the fact that it will be very hard and very puzzling. It'll also be a big test for Jonathan Blow who rose to prominence for creating Braid. Can lightning strike twice? Let's hope so. Super Hot by Team 
super hot. A clever and inventive first person shooter where time moves only when you move, Super Hot was a clever entrant to the 7 day FPS game jam and then raised a cool quarter mil on Kickstarter. I talked about this a bit in my episode on shooters, but my hope is that games like Super Hot keep pushing at the boundaries of the genre. I was blown away by the prototype, which you can still check out. I'll link to it in the description, and I'm really excited to try the full title No Man's Sky by Hello Games. I loved Hello Games' Joe Danger franchise, so when No Man's Sky was announced in 2013, I of course was already sold. It's a sci-fi game in a prestigiously generated galaxy, and a lot of people are excited about the millions of potential planets to explore and subsequently name. That's obviously a big draw of the game, but I'm actually excited about something else, the size of the team behind the game. Big experiences like No Man's Sky are normally reserved for big studios, and to see a team the tenth of a size of a much larger studio make something that feels so immense, that's really promising. Night in the Woods by Infinite Fall. Night in the Woods is an adolescent awakening in the vein of youth and revolt, or clerks. But unlike clerks, you're a rebellious cat named May who finds a hidden and darker side of her town. The game hosts a channel that ennui that's very natural for teenagers into a Richard Scary tale for grown-ups. Adolescence isn't explored nearly enough in games, so Infinite Fall has their work cut out for them. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End by Naughty Dog. I know, I know, another Uncharted game, but hear me out. I've always been a sucker for the Uncharted series and A Thief's End is the seeming final piece of the Nathan Drake story. Yeah, maybe you're right. I've been out of the game, but I need back in. One last time. I'm excited about the clean look of the game. Look, Ma, no HUD. And of course, there's the elaborate set pieces that invariably occur. Can't wait to see what that little scamp Nathan Drake is up to next. Stealing pies, no doubt. Rhyme by Tequila Works. A boy who needs to escape an island and a curse. Go on. Spanish developer Tequila Works has channeled some very, very strong resemblances to Ico with their new title Rhyme. That's not a bad thing. Ico's one of my favorite games ever. There are lots of reasons to look forward to Rhyme, but I have one in particular that's very personal. There aren't a lot of video game characters that look like well, me. And this is exactly the type of non-white character I would have loved to have played as a kid. King's Quest by The Odd Gentleman. When I was a kid, I loved the King's Quest games as hard as they were, King's Quest 4 in particular. It's exciting to see an old franchise get new legs, and particularly at the hands of Odd Gentleman, who made the delectable PB Winterbottom. The main narrative device for the game is flashbacks, which are incredibly rare in the world of video games. It'll be fun to relive past King's Quest experiences, but through the lens of an old storytelling king. Star Fox by Nintendo. Duh. It's the first original Star Fox title in nine years, and Mario guru Shigeru Miyamoto is working on the game himself. Aside from Miyamoto's hand, there isn't much that's known about the new game, but nonetheless, I look forward to doing a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! The Order, 1886 by Ready at Dawn. The Order 1886 is the shocking and amazing true story of how descendants from King Arthur kept the city of London safe during the 19th century from a fleet of half-breed monsters. No, that's not right? Okay, it's made up. Even though it's fiction, the Edwardian elements of the game and the feel of the London fog make this one of the lusher experiences I've ever seen. We use the term cinematic all the time for games. It's like one of those catchwords, like immersive. But this might be one of the first times that it actually feels cinematic to me. They even made the game look anamorphic. No victories on the streets of London. We had a chance to talk to creative director Ru Veer Saria about the game, so keep an eye out for that interview soon. That's it. That's my list. I hope you liked it. If there are some games that you're excited to see in 2015, hash it out in the comments. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week.